You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo TJ's Path. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's friggin' go, girl. Alright, let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Besides, this is the hardest part, and it's almost over. It's all downhill after this. Literally. I can tell he's getting anxious since to start moving again, so I take one last gulp and get up. I don't know, I don't get how you're so damn unaffected by the heat. Oh, I am, I'm just keeping wet. While he talks, he starts pouring water on his shirt. It sticks to slick to his torso, showing off his tight chest and flat stomach. His navel a dark indent through the fabric. I make sure I don't stare too long, not wanting to make him feel awkward again. Either way, I can feel my crotch area getting a little tight. Being in a hotel room with two other people didn't exactly give me much time to, uh, <coughs> relieve stress. Maybe my straight friends did have, to, did have a reason to be, to be wary. I keep my eyes focused on TJ's. I guess that's how you can keep moving like you do, here in the middle of the desert. Well, I run a few miles on the track every day at school. Jeez, jeez. We start up the trail again, TJ sticking by my side now. I feel bad about holding him back, but at least now it's less likely I'm going to eat shit again. Oh, that's pretty. We did it! <laughs> TJ looks over the view looks over the view as I stagger up behind him. I'm not as beaten up as I was earlier, but my legs are really starting to kill me. I lean over with my paws on my knees, panting. Swimming is definitely a better way to work out. TJ turns on me abruptly, and I, stra and I straighten up, smiling. He holds up both his paws, grinning. High five! I slap them with gusto and TJ laughs, pulling off his backpack and sitting down on a rocky bench. I look at it, a little confused. What is this? A rock bench! It's always been here! I think some seniors from the high from the old school made it, see? He scoots over, pointing at the back and I look closer. Etched in large, in large letters and numbers, it says, Echo High, Class of 59. They used to paint the year on the canyon, too. You can still see some of them. Sure enough, I see some white lines on the canyon wall. A 52 here, a 72 there. The school closed after 1980, so I assume there's nothing So there's nothing after that. I sit next to him and lean my head back, closing my eyes. While the hike had been a massive bitch, I still don't regret coming. Not just for TJ's sake, but also because there's something nice about being isolated like this. Like, we're the only people on Earth. I feel a weight fall on my lap and look down, expecting to see a tasty sandwich. Instead, I find a big, fat, hairy tarantula. I freeze as my brain processes what's going on. Then <laughs> I scream and take a swipe at it, at the same time doing a sort of spastic dance to the right. I slide off the bench and onto the ground where I roll several times to get away. HOLY FUCKING SHIT! FUCKING SHIT! SON OF A BITCH! Ah! <laughs> Tourette's chase. <laughs> I roll to my feet and stumble back further away from the bench, eyes scanning the ground for the giant-ass spider that is sure to be after me. That's when I realize TJ's laughing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> chase, Chase, calm down. <laughs> he holds up the giant spider, his frozen rigidness telling me that he couldn't finish. Fake? TJ's still laughing, but I'm still hugging myself, shivering and flinching every time I see something spindly. I'm shocked, but not because of what just happened, but because TJ did, t did it to me. Fucking TJ! Feeling betrayed, I glare at him as he beckons me with a paw, wiping in his eyes with the other. I'm... Oh my gosh, I'm sorry! But Jenna made me promise her that I'd do it. That figures. Jenna is the type to always play pranks, and yeah, I hate to say it, but it's because she's a fox. I rub my arms up and down with my paws, shivering again. I can't believe you! You know how much I... <coughs> you know how much I hate sneezes? <laughs> you know how much I hate spiders? One of my worst fears had always been that of a, that of a tarantula getting into my room. I used to regularly shake out the bed sheets, and when I found out that they lived around Echo... I'm sorry, I thought you might not even fall for it. You know the ones around here are blonde, right? Yeah, TJ, that's the first thing that comes to my mind when I, fuck when I find a fucking spider on my lap. His ears, his ears do lower at that point, and he stops laughing, though I can tell he's trying not to smile. What's that? Alright. Pause. Okay. Listen, Chase, I'm sorry. Let's eat. I know you're hungry. Oh, that's- oh, that's beautiful! Nice! My stomach is painfully hollow right now, so I slowly walk back to the bench. I try- I try hard not to be such a spoil sport as I reach out to take my plastic-wrapped sandwich from TJ. He squirts some hand sanitizer from a little bottle on my paws first before he lets me. We share a bag of chips and eat quietly for a few minutes, just taking in the nature. 
Still, even out here, I'm able to hear the train horns. I feel bad about the silence, though, since I'm worried TJ will, TJ will think that I'm mad at him. I mean, I'm annoyed, but he's just too damn innocent to actually be angry with. The sun's beating straight down on us at this point, and it's uncomfortable feeling my semi-damp shirt rubbing against my fur. Setting aside my, my food for a moment, I strip off my shirt, the wetness giving me a bit of a trouble. As I do this, TJ stiffens up next to me. I look over at him, and right away, it's pretty clear he's trying not to look at me. I wonder if TJ is just one of those guys that's embarrassed about showing any kind of fur. He only ever looks at- he only ever looks off- he only ever takes off his shirt to swim, and even then he always seems embarrassed about it. At that moment, both our paws slide into the chip bag at the same time, and TJ jumps, pulling his paw away. I look over at him, quirking an eyebrow. S sorry For what? Never mind. I watch him take out his phone and look over his messages. When he turns the screen off, he pauses. I realize he's looking at his reflection, adjusting the fur on his face, pawing at both sides until he seems satisfied. Again, this is something he did when he was much younger, back when he was obsessed with his cheek with his cheek ruffs being perfectly even. I don't say anything, though. I just keep eating, bouncing, on my, bouncing one of my knees up and down. I stay awkward, and I can't figure out why. Usually, it's really easy to talk to TJ, mostly because he had a lot of things to talk about. I try to think of something to say. Hey, remember when I, remember when I made fun of you for the way you used to say sorry? TJ gives a bright, high-pitched laugh, and that makes me relax. I feel like I just broke the ice on a first date. Yeah, it's one of the first things you said to me. I was trying so hard to fit in, and you just put me on the spot in front of everyone. The scene plays out in my mind as TJ talks. The image of a seven-year-old lynx looking away, looking way too small for his puffy winter fur. He just backed into me while trying to catch a ball thrown by Leo and had turned around full of smiles. Sorry! I pointed and laughed. Don't you mean sorry? That mortified look followed by what, by, followed by what would become TJ's trademark run back home crying. I must have practiced that word a hundred times when I got back home. There's a little pang in my heart at the image of kid TJ saying sorry over and over again, trying to get it right. Well, I'm sorry for making fun of you for it. <laughs> Why? It was so long ago. Besides, you were just assimilating me into the culture... uh, sort of. If it makes you feel better, Leo did get mad at me after you ran away. He's just having trouble keeping his lettuce-wrapped turkey together. So, are you and him, um, doing alright? I think so. We had a good talk a few days ago. That's good. He gives up on holding the wrap together and instead just starts picking up the remnants from the plastic. Were you lonely after you left? I try not to act surprised that TJ's asking me these questions. Uh, yeah, really lonely. Had a terrible first semester. Oh, what about now? Um, kind of? I guess I just haven't been able to find someone I connect with like I did Leo. Hmm. But again, the GSA at the university is practically dead, so who knows, maybe after I graduate. We eat in silence for a while longer, and though it's less awkward, I'm still trying to figure out what it, what brought TJ to ask me these questions. I crumple up the plastic and toss it in my backpack before getting up. Alright, now I've got to find a good view to get my shots. Shouldn't take too long. Oh, uh, there's a great view of the canyon just up the trail here. He gestures in that, dire in that direction with a half-eaten wrap. I wave at him to let him know let him know I heard and make my way up the trail. The town's, main, the town's namesake isn't much of a canyon. He probably wouldn't even realize it is one without being told. I sidle up as I sidle up as close to the edge as I'm willing, taking a look over the side. Ooh, that's fucking creepy as hell. Feet press pebbles over the side. They clatter down the edge of the cliff. It's dizzying, and I dig my toes into the rocks, feeling as if I'm going to tip over. Tears and rain mingle, finally letting go, going limp, wind giving the final push. I back away. Impact. Instead of release. Pain. I feel the buzzing starting up in my head again, and I sigh as I bend over and reach into my camera bag. I almost wish I could stay here until sunset, since the canyon would be a great backdrop for it. But I definitely don't want to hike back in the middle of the night. It doesn't take long, and about five minutes later, I've got all the footage I need. Hiking all this way definitely isn't worth it, but of course, that's not the reason why I did it. You finished? TJ walks up behind me as I'm bending over to put my camera away. Yep. He hands me a water bottle, and I take it from him. I take it from him gratefully, pouring it over my head and chest, fur and chest, the fur flattening down over my body. TJ looks at my torso, his muzzle quirking at the corner a bit. You know, you kind of look like Jared Grease. I raise an eyebrow at him. The survivalist from the Wilderness Channel? <clears throat> what, just because I'm out in the wilderness and shirtless? Well... You saying all otters look the same? No, I, I mean, <clears throat> not just because you're an otter. I mean, your bodies are... I mean... 
Again, TJ's got me questioning certain things about him. TJ, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, of course. He rubs his shoulder sheepishly as he slowly walks up next to the walks up to the edge next to me. Wow. He gets closer to the cliff, though he does it in a manner in which he spread out his legs and arms, bracing himself against the ground. He peers over the side, looking absolutely ridiculous. We're so high up. <coughs> mm -hmm. Got something caught in my throat, jeez. I smirk, sneaking up behind him. Uh, what? Whoa, what? Oh my god, what the fuck? You can shove him? No! Do nothing, that's fine, but grab him. <clears throat> I grin and then suddenly slap both of my paws on his shoulders. Ah! <laughs> he fluffs out twice his size and almost instantly flails around like a cartoon. I'm sure to keep my grip firmly on his shoulders, one of his windmilling paws catches me in the stomach. My laughing is cut, cut off in a grunt, and I quickly pull back before he can accidentally launch himself off the cliff. Jesus, TJ, calm down! His waving paws finally latch onto my fern. Before I know it, he's got his arms wrapped around my body. I stumble back, clinging to him as well. I stand like that for a few seconds, and I can't help but guiltily feel a little bit tight in the pants again. <laughs> it doesn't last long, though, and soon TJ lets go and swats me in the chest with the back of his paw. Are you kidding me, Chase? How could you? I'd respond, but I'm busy trying to stop laughing. TJ swipes his paw in his pants. You got all your sweat on me! <laughs> hey, you didn't think you you didn't think I'd get you back after that tarantula prank? It wasn't real. I could have died. Calm down. You're safe now. I put a paw around his shoulders and pull him close. He tenses up, but does relax after a few seconds. You're all wet and sweaty. You're in. You'll air dry. We stand there a while, not really ready to hand the head back yet. That's when TJ lets out a sudden loud yell that almost makes me jump out of my fur. Yeah! I put my paws over my ears. TJ, what the f frick? He frowns. Where's the echo? Huh? It's called Echo Canyon. Isn't it supposed to echo? Oh. Hmm. Hey! I yell too, TJ lowering his ears a bit as we wait for the response. His ears perk. I think I heard it. Maybe we're just in the wrong area. But we're, like, right in front of it. TJ leans forward as if that will help, and cups his paws around his muzzle before yelling as loud as he can. Yeah! <laughs> this time I do hear a return. It's muffled, scratchy, ugly, but it's an echo, all right. TJ makes a face. Oh, that sounded creepy. <laughs> well, what did you expect? Everything should crappy here. Including Echo, including Echo's Echoes, blah! Again, we're answered with a raspy, ugly response. My voice twisted and distorted. Seems a bit silly to name the entire town after that. I think it fits. I grunt as I sit down, spreading out my legs with a sigh. TJ does the same, except with his legs crossed. You really hate this place, don't you? He looks sideways at me. You don't? Of course not. All my best friends are from here. I mean, some of it is bad, but why let the bad taint the good? I make a non-committal grunting sound. I wish we all could have come up here. I, he really he, he really does look disappointed, and I feel bad about that. What? I'm not good enough? TJ giggles. I'm really, I really am glad you came. It means a lot. It would have been pretty lonely else otherwise. I look over at him, and he's looking right, and he's looking me right in the eye. His powder blue gaze is really pretty with the sunlight hitting it like that. He's smiling, and I smile back. Mm. Suddenly, his phone buzzes. He breaks eye contact to adjust his sitting position so he can get it out of his pocket. Probably Jenna checking in on... I turn to look back at him when he goes quiet. He's furrowing his brow at the phone, as if trying to figure out what it says. Everything alright? Slowly his face relaxes, but now his expression is dull. His eyes glazed over. TJ? I start to lean sideways to get a look, get a look at what the messages might be, but TJ quickly shoves it back into his pocket. N nothing, it's just a long message from my mom. I can tell right away he's lying. Which is fucking crazy, because I don't think TJ has ever lied to me. At least not so easily. Is it bad? No, just something about something about when I come home for the summer. Oh, okay. It's weird because I know he's lying. He probably knows I know he's lying. But still, here we are, playing along. He stares quietly at the canyon for a few seconds, then stands up, brushing himself off. Alright, let's go. The cheerfulness in his voice is forced. It just sounds like he's about to cry. And like I said, it's all it's all downhill from here. Literally. He turns away quickly and starts and starts back down the trail, wiping his face. I hang back, wanting to give him time to get over whatever it is that's bothering him. I wonder if it's something to do with the family, like a grandparent passing away or something. 
I feel too intrusive asking about it now, so I decide to put it off until tomorrow. The hike back is, like TJ said, literally downhill, so it's way easier than coming than coming up. TJ's still a little overbearing, making sure I have water and dumping a few unsolicited bottles over my head. Even then, he's still acting a bit detached. I try to stay upbeat, though, and since TJ's never been one to sulk for long, I get back, I get him, I get him warmed back up pretty quick. By the time we get back to the car, he's in a talkative mood again. So I'm thinking we're gonna get. So I'm thinking we're gonna get Jenna to the diner for to the diner for dinner. Sound good? Sure, I'll text her. I reach out, I reach out to turn on the radio, then I remember where we are. So now that we've got hiking out of the way, what are we gonna do for the rest of the trip? We've got like three days left. Hmm. TJ rests his elbow against the door, tugging at the fur on his chin. Well, there are more trails than just that one. We could hike those too. I cringe inwardly at the thought of more hiking, but I don't say anything, and I'm pretty sure TJ knows that I'm not into it. But you still need to do stuff for your project too, right? I could help you with any research you might need to do. Maybe. It's pretty boring stuff. Well, the work, yeah, but hanging out together could be, would make it fun. I grin at his eagerness. Well, alright, but I warn you, it's a pain in the ass. I mean, but... TJ smirks at me. Chase, you don't have to be, you don't have to try so hard. Anyway, I just want to help. Turns out Jenna just walked from the motel to the diner, not really wanting to wait for us. Me and TJ step inside, greeted by the smell of what you'd expect any di in any diner, burgers and fries. I'm flooded with old memories. It's a place that I, that I had gone to eat every weekend for over ten years of my life. I smile despite myself. Well, while I complained a lot about Echo, this place held incredibly happy memories, most of which involved my five friends. We see Jenna right away as she steps out from a booth next to the door. Hey, boys! Hey! Sup? We make our way over to the booth, TJ sitting on the opposite bench while Jenna, st while Jenna steps back to let me pass and sit next to her. She wrinkles her nose as I do. Woo! Maybe you should have showered before you got here. Uh, thanks, Jenna. TJ probably smells too. Nah, he smells fine. Of course he does. Thanks, Jenna. And don't blame Chase. Otters are, um, naturally musky. I decide not to say anything and instead pull a menu out of the metal out of the metal holder and flip through it. The table is greasy, so I try not to lean on any anything on it. So, did you guys have fun? Yeah, made it all the way to the top. We did it faster than I thought we would, actually. Did you, you know... Yeah, he really freaked out. <laughs> I knew it! Did you film it? Uh, no. What? That's the reason you pulled pranks! Why didn't you film it? I forgot! I glare at the menu. Shouldn't let her corrupt you so easily, TJ. I try to think of some Satan metaphor that I can use, but that's when the giant plastic spider lands with a smack on top of the menu I'm looking at. Ah! I can't help myself and shove the menu and spider away from myself to fall over onto TJ's bench. I look up and Jenna's filming me with her phone, grinning. Stop it! I have hard to grab at the phone, but Jenna easily pulls it away. <clears throat> oh my word, is that Chase? I look up to see the menu. Oh, her, yeah. Oh my word, is that Chase? I look up to see the middle-aged coyote making her way from the back kitchen and around the counter. Oh, hi Janice! And Jenna and Tobias, too. All right, I'm going to pause it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday evening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!